now that we've completed the calibration of the ETEC, the first measurement um, set of the enhanced procedure is going to be a load measurement. That falls under the ambient category. And we need to, at this point, set up our file structure to measure the three samples. We've got three sets of cut samples. Each set consists of a rectangle and a 45. Um, and each rectangle and 45 is cut from an individual brake pad. We usually like to have three brake pads and average the results. Um, on the screen, there is, a, is the word file with a little drop-down arrow, and I'm going to click on the drop-down arrow and select New, and I'm going to enter um, a, a, essentially a file name. So we're going to call this, this set of samples IMS, set 5, sample A, and the second and the third will be called B and C. The new measurement run is clicked because I have not measured these samples before, and now I'm going to press OK. At this point, I essentially will um, repeat for the B and C sample, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to continue on with sample with the sample A. The next step is to press configure the sample run. And this comes up with sample information and I have, um, I have measured the dimensions of the samples as well as weighed them, and I need to enter them into this table, starting with the, the longest dimension, which is the one, 19.47, the, the two dimension, which is the, the medium dimension, and the three dimension, which is the, the thickness direction. For the 45 degree sample, I'm going to show you um, how we actually cut the 45 degree samples. Um, this block illustrates um, a piece of friction material that has been cut from the steel backing. So th this is the thickness of the, of the friction material. So the 45 angle is normal, is 45 degrees uh, to the surface of the friction material. This is the 45 degree sample and we will be putting our sensors on either side of the, the cut surface and this is the thickness measurement that we need to be measuring. Okay. All right, so I will enter the dimensions and the weight and when I'm finished, I will go on to the run setup. I've entered the dimensions of the sample and the, the mass and the density is automatically calculated. The next step is to click on the Run Setup tab and this is where we select the measurement that we're going to make and I'm going to click on Load Dependent Measurement Sequence. On the left side of the screen it says that this is going to be 11 steps that is incremented by 5 bar and the first measurement mode is going to be a V33. At this point I can click done and we go back to our measurement screen. I take my A sample and I set it between the two transducers and start to apply load till I get a waveform on the screen. If there is any attenuation in the line, now is the time to remove it. So I'm going to start to apply some, some load here. I'm going to need to increase my gain. Typically, I like to have a, um, a waveform that is on the order of uh, three to four tenths of a volt in size. So this is a longitudinal waveform. I'm going to also click start run now that I have my sample in place. The prompt at the bottom of the screen will tell the operator the, the next step that they need to take. So it says place the V33 sample in the V33 mode and apply 955 newtons and adjust the cursors and press accept. So. The current load now is only 700 newtons. I need to increase that to about 955. And now my, um, the peak of my 
waveform is off the screen. I've lowered the gain. I'm going to drag my cursor so that the yellow vertical line is measuring that first peak. And I'm all set to click accept. Now the prompt at the bottom of the screen says apply 868 newtons. So I simply start to release the load until we're at approximately 868 newtons. And once I'm there, again, I click Accept. And I will be going now to 781, 694, and so on and so forth and get till I get down to um, about 89 newtons. Okay. Go. The last measurement for the load with the compressional transducers, it says apply 87 newtons. I will click accept, and then we are ready to start with the shear wave load measurement. I will raise the sensors, set my sample aside, unscrew the sensors, and replace with the shear wave sensors. Uh, with the shear wave measurements and friction materials, it is essential to know where the orientation of the, uh, the stems of the transducers are. So we're do going to be doing a 3-2 measurement. That means that the sound wave is going to travel through the thickness of the material, which is the three direction, and the stems will be parallel to the two direction of the sample, which is here. So I will place the sample on the transducers like so. And it's the, the prompt says apply 955 newtons. And the, the loads will be the same as we measured with the compressional transducers. The biggest difference here is going to be that we're going to measure a trough and not a peak. On this model of the ETEC, we have to flip a toggle switch in order to get the, the shear waves on with the, the older models of the ETEC um, because we're unplugging and plugging in the transducers. That is not necessary. So the waveform um, that we're looking at here, the area of interest is this trough. I'm adjusting my cursors here. I need to decrease my gain in order to make the trough somewhere between three and four tenths of a volt. And once I'm on nine, 955 newtons approximately, I am ready to click accept. And the prompt now is going to say apply 800 newtons and increment down to 80, 89 newtons just as we did with the compressional measurement.